Hello friends, welcome back to another episode by Engineering Today and hope you're doing well. In today's episode, we're going to share three updates with you. We'll first discuss SpaceX brand new Falcon Heavy core booster spotted at Kennedy Space Center. Then we'll talk about SpaceX's growing importance as a satellite service provider and we'll conclude with the UK's space and aviation sanctions on Russia. Let's get started with an update where SpaceX ships a brand new Falcon Heavy core booster to the Kennedy Space Center. SpaceX's upcoming Falcon Heavy launches are continuously facing multiple delays, which had created almost a three-year gap since the last Falcon Heavy launch in 2019. As a preparation for those delayed missions, SpaceX teams are now storing core booster and side boosters to ease the launch process. Recently, amidst these delays, it's seen that SpaceX teams have delivered a Falcon Heavy core stage to NASA's Kennedy Space Center launch site. As per reports, this Falcon Heavy core stage was a brand new one and it headed towards Hangar X rocket storage and processing facilities. Hangar X is SpaceX's new rocket integration facility located in Kennedy Space Center where they manage the storage capacity of booster and fairing as well as carry out necessary installations and even go for refurbishments all in a single place. Sources state that the brand new Falcon Heavy core stage was transferred to the Hangar X on the 9th of March. The core stage lacked some essential parts and equipment, thus it's expected that SpaceX teams will do the remaining installations in the Hangar X, and then they can go for launch. According to some reports, it's expected that this brand new core stage will be assigned to the upcoming launch of Falcon Heavy. It's not entirely clear where the Falcon Heavy center core came from. We know that multiple delays have put a negative impact on the three of several Falcon Heavy launches, which are planned to be carried out in 2022. And these delays have made SpaceX to put more Falcon Heavy cores in a random order for the upcoming missions, thus totally rearranging the booster mission factor. It's quite plausible that the transfer of new core stage to Hangar X is not for mere installation process, but to store it there for longer periods and use it for later missions. As SpaceX has a fleet of six Falcon Heavy boosters, which are yet to carry out their first flight, moreover they have several flight-proven Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy boosters too in hand, so it's quite probable that a great deal of shuffling of boosters may be done before launch. Reports say that SpaceX's Falcon Heavy launch schedule of the upcoming three missions has almost pooled with the upcoming Dragon launches due to delays. As both Dragon and Falcon Heavy will use the same pad, 39A, it aggregates the problem. Sources state that earlier the Falcon Heavy launches were planned in late March and then in mid-April or early May, and presently it seems that launch schedule will shift back to late May or early June 2022. NASA's USSF-44 and USSF-52 missions that were planned to be launched by Falcon Heavy are now years behind its original schedule. Another mission on Falcon Heavy, which is the Viasat-3, is also delayed due to supplier issues with Viasat's spacecraft. Report says that U.S. military is no longer willing to announce any further launch date of USSF-44 and USSF-52 missions publicly. Now, only NASA's Psyche mission, planned to launch in Falcon Heavy rocket, remains in its scheduled launch time of August 2022. As launch time on USSF-44 and USSF-52 is quite uncertain, it may become possible that Psyche mission could launch before USSF-44 and USSF-52 and Viasat-3. In our next update, we'll talk about SpaceX's growing importance as a satellite service provider in the midst of the Ukraine crisis. SpaceX's stance in Ukraine is establishing a promising future for mega constellations like Starlink. In a recent hearing of the Senate Armed Services Committee held on the 8th of March, General James Dickinson, 
commander of U.S. Space Command, stated that, What we're seeing with Elon Musk and the Starlink capabilities is really showing us what a mega constellation or a proliferated architecture can provide in terms of redundancy and capability. Senator Tim Kaine had also held SpaceX's work in Ukraine as positive news, and it sets a good example of private actors in space entering into contested environments. Senator Kaine had inquired that Russia has been trying to jam the signals and block coverage, so if there is any legal framework for private space companies to get involved in these complex situations and find a way out. Dickinson replied that, We do look at that, Senator. We work very closely in our commercial integration cell on that very issue. As per reports, the commercial integration cell, also known as CIC, is a group of 10 commercial satellite operators that work along with U.S. Space Command to share information about threats in space and other worrying issues. And it's interesting to note that SpaceX is also one of the partners here. The other nine commercial operators are Viasat, Utelsat, Intelsat, Amarsat, Maxar, SES Government Solutions, Xtar, Iridium Communications, and Hughes Network Systems. On the 7th of March, 2022, SpaceX's president, Gwyn Shotwell, stated that they had started working to get approval for Starlink services in Ukraine many weeks before Ukrainian minister Mikhail Fedorov had requested Musk for satellite connection there. Shotwell said that, We had been working on trying to get permission for landing rights to lay down capacity in Ukraine. We had been working with the Ukrainians for a month and a half or so. Shotwell held that approval for Starlink service in Ukraine was part of their service expansion plans in Europe and other places too. SpaceX was almost ready to provide connectivity service there. One thing they were waiting for was the permission to start service. And the tweet from Fedorov worked as the official approval. As Shotwell pointed out, after the Russian invasion, Ukraine had tweeted, there's our permission. She further said, they tweeted at Elon and so we turned it on, she said. That was our permission. That was the letter for the minister. It was a tweet. Regarding the start of Starlink services in Ukraine, Shotwell commented, that was the right thing to do, as it enables the free flow of information among people. She said, I think the best way to uphold democracies is to make sure we all understand what the truth is. While Starlink is doing good work in Ukraine, the Polaris Dawn mission is planning to carry Ukraine's flag to space as a sign of solidarity with the country, which is defending itself from Russia for the last two weeks. The Polaris Dawn mission, under Polaris program, led by billionaire Jared Isaacman, is planned to be carried out later this year. In their official Twitter page, Polaris team wrote, We stand with Ukraine and its brave citizens and all those fighting for freedom across the world. The Polaris Dawn crew will take this flag to a place in space that still remains beyond the reach of tyranny. Shotwell also put light on upcoming plans of SpaceX. She said, Our value right now is not based on Falcon and Dragon, it's based on Starlink and Starship. The value of this particular company is driven now by Starlink and will go further with Starship. Regarding space debris problem, she stated, We, I believe, are great stewards of the space environment as SpaceX satellites can do automated collision avoidance maneuvers and can also deorbit them when they become non-operational. She further said, I think there's going to come a time when we're not going to want to fly non-propulsive satellites or satellites that cannot deorbit. We'll wrap up with a discussion about bans on space equipment exports to Russia by the United Kingdom. On the 9th of March, Liz Truss, Foreign Secretary of UK, announced that the UK government is presently levying newer trade sanctions on Russia's space sector. As per reports, the announcement mainly revolved around the most recent aviation sanctions laid out by the UK in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. These sanctions have imposed effective bans on overflight and landing of Russian aircrafts. As per reports, the trade sanctions will prevent UK exports of aviation or space-related items and technology to Russia, including related services such as insurance and reinsurance services. 
The announcement further states, This means cover is withdrawn on existing policies, and UK insurers and reinsurers will be unable to pay claims in respect of existing policies in these sectors. The new measures will further tighten the growing economic pressure on Russia and ensure the UK is in line with sanctions imposed by our allies. The UK's ban on space-related exports on Russia were much similar to the bans imposed by the European Union. Covering goods and technology suited for use in aviation and the space industry and prohibits the provision of insurance and reinsurance and maintenance services in relation to those goods and technology. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.